Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015 from Studio C, brought to you by Cisco. Now your host, Brian Gracely. Welcome back to theCUBE. We're here live at Oracle Open World 2015 here in San Francisco, down here at what we're calling Studio C, right here in the middle of the show floor uh, here at Oracle Open World. Really excited, tons of energy here on the floor, 60,000 people. Uh, Larry Ellison just finished up his afternoon keynote. Lots of talk about security, lots of talk about the cloud, really talking about the transformation that's happening here at Oracle Open World. And excited to have two guests for this segment. I'm Brian Gracely with Wikibon. We've got Lisa Spellman, who is general manager of Intel's data center marketing. Yep. And Great of course, a man you. who needs no introduction this week, Jim McCune from Cisco's uh, <laughs> data center business group, vice president. Welcome, both of you. Thanks Thank you. for having us, yeah. You know, I was thinking about as I came over today, probably five, six years ago, seven years ago, when UCS first got announced, you know, there's a lot of naysayers, a lot of people saying, Cisco servers, it's a low margin business, why are you getting into that? And, and the thing that struck me, because I was at Cisco at the time, was, you know, I don't think people understand what Cisco gets into. They get into innovation. And, you, and between the two companies was a ton of innovation. Innovation around memory extension, innovation around uh, converged networking, fiber channel and ethernet, innovation around driving APIs around infrastructure that had really never been done. Talk about where the partnership's gone and just, I mean, does it exceed your expectations thinking back to where you were five, six, eight years ago? Well, I'll go first and then uh, Jim can have a chance to weigh in, but I think it's exciting in many ways. Um, I think Cisco was ahead of the game in uh, creative and sophisticated solutions that were addressing some of tomorrow's problems and tomorrow's now today. Yeah. So they've had tremendous success in the market and we've been delighted to share in that with them. Um, and one of the areas that's uh, most interesting is how a lot of people have thought of Cisco in the past as a network company, and then they've moved into the enterprise space and into the cloud space, and now you see actually network, enterprise, and cloud are themselves converging as markets and as, um, as styles of infrastructure um, converge, their solutions are becoming even more prevalent and even more favored across people who want a well-run, well-managed entire data center, right. not just server rack. Yeah, so. yeah, no, and it's, and it's great to see, I mean, Cisco has always pushed being leading edge, and, and over and over again we see Cisco getting you know, benchmark wins against virtualization environments, benchmark wins against yeah. bare metal. It's showing that it's not just everything is the same, there's opportunity to innovate, there's opportunity to, to really drive the market. Yep. How do you guys think about that innovation? It's, it's part of the DNA, I would think. Well, you know, actually, I have to say we were fortunate, because we started as a greenfield yeah. in the space, right? We did That's not true. have to bring all the legacy components along with us and everything that we did in the past. So we were able, when we launched UCS, start with clean slate, designed for virtualization, designed for the types of applications that are going to be coming, as opposed to, you know, bringing along some of the other components that we have been doing for years and years and years. Yeah. So when we got in, timing was right. You know, we actually had some great updates from coming out of Intel that we were able to incorporate early on. And we just got the market at a transition where the beginning of integrated infrastructures were happening, bringing together, because it's not just a server, it's a compute offering. Right. You know, we call it a unified computing system because it is a system. Right. It's bringing together compute, network, and storage access, and it's just, right. it was timed right. Right, well, and I, and I think that, that change, that time of change, you know, six, seven years ago, was really kind of the beginning of when people went from, you know, bare metal to virtualization. And they're starting to think about how do I, how do I do things in a cloud-like manner? Yep. We're now, you know, this show has been, you could call it Oracle Cloud World almost. Yes. You know, that's been the theme all week. Talk about how you both think about clouds, because it's very much world of many clouds, you know, clouds for all. But what's your take on, on how many people are going to innovate in this space and what customers really want? It's interesting because uh, there's a lot of people that think of cloud and they think of really big cloud service providers. Sure. And when we launched our cloud for all, one of our taglines is there's, there's tens of thousands of more clouds that are yet to be born. Right. And we want to be part of that with you know, partners like Cisco to drive that um, innovation and new capability that does actually transform businesses. So you can look at industry after industry and see how moving to cloud type architectures has actually changed the industry. And I mean, a classic example is the taxi industry. It's still on your phone, it's just you're not calling, you're, That's right. uh, you're hitting. That's right. And that can now happen across not just consumer services, but that will start to move into business services over the next several years. And there have been real and legitimate barriers to entry to getting you know, enterprise, 
on-premise or hybrid clouds built, but one by one, you know, the folks at the show here are helping knock those down and make it uh, possible for enterprise to realize that value from a cloud uh, right. infrastructure. Right, well, and I, and I know from having been at Cisco, Cisco's never afraid of the big challenge. So, yeah. you know, you talk to them about an, an Uber, or Airbnb, these radical business models. John Chambers was talking about that for decades. Chuck Robbins is now in place. Talk about what Chuck's philosophy is around the data center and around cloud. How are you, is it similar or is he a bigger vision? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's what we're all seeing. The data center's not confined to the four walls of the data center anymore, right? Um, you know, we talk about, I'll give a bold prediction. There's going to be more than two clouds in 10 years. So just, <laughs> I would agree just go ahead you. on the record for that. Uh, what's going on is actually we're finding compute is becoming very specific. We, you know, we can talk about things commoditizing, but we're actually able to do more with compute in different environments. So whether it's IoT at the edge and actually have it just the right amount of compute there, or if it's data center where you have to scale up, you know, we're doing much more focus there. And then, then the scale out types of applications that are going on. So you have what's going on is there's more change going on with applications, that more change going on with digitization, and we're, you know, Cisco's rapidly becoming a digital company, embracing it full on, Chuck's leading that charge. Yeah. And we're just saying the change is coming. What we do know, as our two companies, like the infrastructure that underlies that has to be reliable, but it has to be flexible, fit different form factors. And the more that you can have consistency and standardization, you're going to have better management, but there's going to be a lot of dynamic changes going on in our world. Yeah, we see a vast diversity of workloads that are growing. I mean, just the changes and extensions within the workloads that people are running in their data center leads to still a general purpose solutions that can address a lot. You don't, you can't build a custom stack for every single thing. Right. But then one of the big themes we see across all of those workloads is a data analytics uh, just prevalence. Like that, that, that wave is coming. It's the next thing and it's what's going to take everyone by storm as they figure out how to get real insight out of the data that they're now stuffed with. Right, right, well, we're, we're seeing that. Whether we're talking about, like you said, IOT, I mean, everybody's got a yeah. device. Everybody's got 10 devices, and their kids have a bunch of devices. How are your customers understanding that? Because that's a big change. It's, you know, a lot more data, re, you know, rethinking about how networks work, rethinking about what the compute, where to put the compute environment. Yeah. What yeah. are the early thoughts you're hearing from your customers around that space, and what are they asking you to help them with? I think that data explosion, we're just, um, it feels huge right now, and I think we're just at the beginning, because we're still in a, to your uh, point about humans driving the need for additional, or creating more data, driving more storage, and it's going to shift over the next five, however many years, into a things are creating it. It's the sensors, it's the right. world, and a lot of our customers are asking um, for the rationalization. How, does, how do I make sense of that, and how do I turn that into a business model I can monetize? Because again, when you're serving serving your enterprises or your government customers and looking at what, what do they need. They need to um, advance and accelerate their business model versus keep doing what they're doing only more efficiently. Right. So that's that's survival and then there's you know win on top of it. Right. Well, yeah. and, and both of you focus on the data center, but I have to imagine, you know, Cisco's got such tremendous understanding of how networks work, protocols and so forth. Intel's got such understanding of what the devices are changing. We're seeing all sorts of form factors. I got to imagine this partnership, while it's data center's the core, you've got to be thinking about how do those other elements affect the data center? Is that going on? Is that, that kind of conversation oh, yeah, going on? Definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think what you alluded to with the, with the data and analytics, I mean, you're going to be doing data computation at the edge, you're going to be creating big data lakes or enterprise data hubs, as our friends from Cloudera like to call it, Yeah. and forming those where you're actually going to do deep learning study from it. And then you're going to be doing things that you're going to be, I'm just going to have a cloud-based service. It's going to come, where I can actually just take advantage of this let's call it data science automation, right? right? There's a lot of companies that are doing that, so it, it's, everything's a cycle. <laughs> yeah. For a while, we were actually just trying to figure out how to collect the data so we could actually have more data so we could get insights from the data. Now we're actually understanding if you don't actually do prep on that data, clean it up, do analysis on that data before you actually do the analytics on the data, right. then you're not going to get the, the information. So it's a cycle, we keep going around, and as we understand more and more how to do those solutions, we understand more and more from an infrastructure standpoint what's required yeah. and how to better hit it. We're also very lucky to have um, Cisco, such a tight alliance that we have with them because they are a preeminent leader in the network space and um, we've had great success and learnings from them. And, uh, 
the whole area of the comm service providers is going through an industry transformation as they you know, look and move off of fixed fun function and proprietary you know, ASICs and ASSPs. And we've had great partnership there. Actually, we have some um, announcements coming out in the next months together that I think will be pretty exciting. So, uh, you know, you don't want to You don't want to drop them on here? Exclusive I, for theCUBE? I exclusive know, the Cube. We'll I just know. announce everything. <laughs> they're exciting, but it's all coming in. It's really targeted in that space and winning together and yeah. continuing to help that industry through a transformation. Again, we're not forcing it. They need it for their business model as they struggle with the explosion of data, the explosion of users, and again, monetizing and um, continuing to have viable business models. Right. So, we've been talking about these things at massive scale, explosion. You mentioned just a few minutes ago automation, and yeah. I got to commend both of you. You know, if I had said three or four years ago, you know, open source and Cisco or Intel, you'd have kind of gone, well, those two words don't. Both of your companies are making tremendous contributions yeah. in open source right. around automation, around these new frameworks for you know, cloud native. How do you think about, I mean, how much is open source, are you hearing from, from your customers saying, hey, be part of the community, and how much do you just feel like that's going to help you engineer better products? Well, we've um, been working actually together uh, with Red Hat as a partner on some of those um, open source related but engineered solutions. So one of the barriers uh, with open source, it's, it hasn't always been the technology. Of course, we're putting in enterprise features and trying to really focus in that space, but it's the confidence and it's people having right. the um, belief that it will work for them and uh, it's a lot that they of can cultural, bet on. Yeah, it's a lot of cultural change. You yes. know, am I putting intellectual property out there? What does it mean to work with the community? And I, I think it's great that both of you are, are getting comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, you know, companies are trying to figure it out, but no, I think it's fantastic. I think uh, you know, people should go off and look at the things that you're building, because it gives people a sense of not only what you want to work on, but where they can come and help, because it is. These problems are difficult problems. They're not going to be solved by one company. Right. Well, we also hope that when people see names like Cisco and Intel partnered together, that does build the confidence and trust, because yeah. you know, we are brands that are built on um, that reliability right. and that credibility, and we will deliver that through our open source solutions and our open source partners. Right. Let, let's talk a little more about big data. Um, what, what are the things that you're doing to help make it simpler, right? You know, there was a, an article a few years ago that said data scientists is going to be the sexiest job in the 21st century, but they're hard to find, right? Yes. Uh, what are you doing to make data science and big data analytics easier for people? Uh, that's a, that article is, or is funny. We've seen a lot of um, our chief data scientists likes to refer to that, you know, a time <laughs> or two again. So for those of you that happened to watch online and saw our um, Intel CEO Brian Kuzanich speak on Sunday night, he actually uh, talked about this and had our chief data scientist Bob Rogers on stage with him to talk about one of the things and big investments we've made is in our trusted analytics port, um, platform. Excuse me, and this is again. We've developed it, and now it's open source. We're handing it completely back to the industry right. to start developing and getting um, getting outcomes out of. So um, that is a platform as a service that's designed to democratize big data services, and so that you're not reliant on the bottleneck of data scientists and um, data analytics and all the people that have all the skill sets that are in such incredible demand. They can't even finish school before they get snapped up. Right, so. right. Yeah. I, I feel bad because we always joke that uh, when you look at a PowerPoint presentation about a product, security is always the last bullet point. You know, we're, we're, we're a good way into this, this talk. Larry talked for an hour about security, and he talked about security, you know, he said, well, we've got to get further down in the stack, you know, almost down to the silicon level. Well, what's your, what is Intel's overall take on trying to put security deeper down into the stack, even at the silicon level? You know, fundamentally, we're in complete alignment that the, the lower the go, you go, the more secure you get. We just think he made a mistake on that last portion. <laughs> he forgot to say Intel Xeon, because that's really where it's at. Right. So you can see, we've been putting over the years features into the silicon, like Intel, uh, trusted execution technology, and you start to see, uh, especially in the cloud space, cloud service providers are differentiating their offering because of those silicon features. So right. with TXT, and that's a differentiating feature, and we're continuing to invest there and also um, tie together that relationship with our uh, Intel security group, formerly you know, McAfee, right. where you take software, you learn it in software, develop it, move it down into the silicon over time to continue yeah. to uh, harden that 
stack. Right. Well, and it's, it's becoming more and more important. Obviously, customers are afraid of getting attacked. The attackers yeah. are getting better. But it's differentiating for service providers. They want to be able to say, yeah. we're secure, we can, go, we're, we can audit, we can do compliance, and we're going to yeah. do that in real time. So I want to give you both a, a chance to sort of last question, last answer. What are the, what's the one theme that you're really taking away from this week that you're, that you're really going to be talking to your customers about? Uh, one, well, I think cloud. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I also, it's, it's the understanding that cloud is going to be a journey, right? So anytime we make predictions something's going to happen 10 to 15 years out, we're, we're declaring there's a journey along the way. There's a lot of customer needs that are going to be met by private cloud. There's going to be a lot of customer needs that are going to be met by big clouds. But there's also going to be a lot of specialized clouds that are going to spin up there to really do it. And I think big data and analytics is one of the solutions that are going to fit in that. <coughs> Machine learning, deep learning will be after that. I think, uh, not to sound uncreative, but I think Jim's nailed it, and I think that's what uh, Oracle's definitely put on here is a, a cloud show. So we like to say we're you know ahead of the game with our cloud for all type of idea. It really is pervasive, and it will cut across all industries, all vertical segments, all usage models, and I think the previous barriers that people had about the difficulty of deploying clouds, the difficulty of managing clouds, the difficulty of the software stack are getting knocked down one by one, and I think it's a revolution that's happening. Yeah, I, I think that's a great thing to sort of wrap on. Lisa and Jim, thanks for this great, great conversation. Cisco and Intel have been doing a ton of really good innovation, continue to do it. Great partnership, excited to hear what you're going to announce yeah. next month. Folks, with that, we're going to wrap up here. Uh, you know, stay tuned for all the things we've been doing here on theCUBE, Silicon Valley, uh, SiliconAngle.tv, Wikibon.com for all the research we're doing around this space. Stick around, we'll be right back. <laughs>